Well, joining me right now is John Austin. He's the president of the State Board of Education here in Michigan. And not only that, he's the director of the Great Lakes Economic Initiative. So thanks so much for sure. joining us. Glad we to appreciate be with it. You. So this is day one for you here at the conference as we're wrapping up Great Lakes Week. And we've talked an awful lot about some of the issues and the problems facing the waterways. Uh, and we've talked about how that takes a lot of money. But we also need to focus on the fact that keeping these waterways clean can make us money, and it's an economic boon. Right, and that's the work that we've been doing uh, with many partners in the region. How do we understand uh, the Great Lakes and our natural assets as uh, part of our economic engine uh, and the source of new jobs and new opportunities in this industrial heartland era? And, you know, there's so many ways that our um, water and our natural environment really uh, contribute to us being a place that uh, will create new jobs in a, a new century, really. Uh, one, it's a beautiful place. Mm -hmm. You know, if the beaches are open and you can look out your window and see the Detroit River or walk along the shores of uh, Lake Michigan or Lake Huron, uh, then it's just a place people want to be. They want to live and work. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's contingent on the water being clean. Also, there's tons of um, new technologies. The water technology businesses, you know, cleaning it, um, working out on how to uh, use it smarter, more efficiently, just like with energy. Energy. Smart water technology is a growing $700 billion global business. And so we can convert a lot of our uh, traditional economic base manufacturing uh, to be in the business of smart water, water monitoring, water measuring, solving big water problems. You know, there's a great example uh, from uh, Cascade Engineering uh, in West Michigan. They made auto parts, you know, plastic injection molded mm -hmm. auto parts. Now they're making a water filtering device for the third world that can help people have available fresh water. That's the kind of um, water technology opportunity that also is a part of the mix, as well as leveraging this beautiful state to be a place people choose to live and work with its natural beauty. Again, if the water's clean, if we clean up the mess mm -hmm. from kind of the industrial era that made us great. And that's the kind of um, uh, work we've put some sort of price tag on the economic benefit for cleaning up the Great Lakes that has been helpful in getting federal dollars to flow towards some of the Great Lakes cleanup that is part of the discussion here this week. And how would you explain to people home, what, what is the, the, the ratio here about the, the, the benefit, the economic right. benefit? Well, a few years ago, uh, partnering with uh, many of the groups here, Great Lakes Industries, Healing Our Water Coalition, Brookings Institution, we got some of the best economists, you know, really hard-headed economists to uh, put a uh, value on the major moves that are part of a long-term Great Lakes cleanup effort, cleaning up the toxic areas of mm -hmm. concern in our bays and harbors, you know, from Duluth to uh, Cleveland to Buffalo, uh, making sure our water and sewer systems uh, do their job so that you don't have fouled beaches uh, and that uh, you're, the water's clean enough so that fish stocks are growing, not mm -hmm. diminishing. Uh, all of those things contribute to uh, economic development. There's, there's more tourism and recreation. People are uh, housing and property values along the lakes if they're open uh, for, for use, really, uh, go up. So uh, the $20 billion that it would take to uh, restore all of those, um, put in all of those elements, uh, we estimate uh, very conservatively has a $50 billion economic development return in terms of new economic growth jobs and and a, a 30 billion dollar worth of sort of boots on the ground you put people to work mm -hmm. if you're rebuilding uh, water and sewer systems you know if you're having construction engineering firms involved in cleaning the lake that's sort of jobs now mm -hmm. Uh, doing this work. So $80 billion uh, of economic benefit for a $20 billion investment. And happily, uh, we began a couple years ago to see the federal government, with this argument, begin to pour some hundreds of millions of dollars into Great Lakes cleanup. And part of it is we need to keep it going as part of our economic platform looking ahead. And that was my next question to you. We're talking about the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative, where they initially had the $475 million right. that they want to spend a year. Now that, that number is shrinking, and it seems like when people have to cut money out of the budget, it's like, well, maybe that's not totally necessary, the environment. We can just kind of squeeze a little bit out of that. But is the argument now that we've got to get the public more involved in understanding what kind of restoration projects are out there, how necessary they are to get done, and that can help the bottom line of the economy as right. well. If it's not about jobs in Michigan or Ohio and Wisconsin, then people aren't uh, uh, caring about it. Mm -hmm. And so making the argument be, this is, this is a good thing to do for the environment, but it is more about jobs and economic development. Let's get people to work. And so that's um, a more powerful argument than doing a nice thing for the environment. This is central to our economic uh, 
the competitiveness moving ahead. All right, so you're going to be presenting in about an hour or so. Can you talk a little bit about what you're going to be talking to the group about? Well, we've been working uh, with the University of Toronto uh, Mowat Center. We did a conference here, actually, in Detroit and Windsor six months ago that was another iteration. How do we understand the major economic agendas for this binational Great Lakes region? And so we're going to be sharing some of the uh, actions that we think we can work together on with our Canadian partners, uh, greasing the trade and border uh, flexibility, mm -hmm. uh, continuing to make headway in developing this blue economy, this water-based uh, economic development agenda for the region in a binational way, uh, focusing on how we can partner with our great research and learning institutions to expand our innovation, new discovery, teaching, learning, new technologies, and a whole range of issues. We've got the greatest universities on the planet right here in the Great Lakes mm -hmm. that are a source of discovering the new new thing, solving global food, health, and water problems. And those are some of the, the strategies that we're going to be talking about. What do you think the takeaway is going to be from this week, the last day of this conference, finally all these groups coming together? Do you think that we're going to see some kind of agenda, or, or wh what's going to be the mood going forward? Well, I think the, the general uh, um, push that we all need to understand, we're one of the few places here in Michigan and here in the Great Lakes where we have two things. We can be the uh, sort of innovation economic engine, new technologies, new jobs, and we can be a beautiful place for people to live and work. We have this special natural uh, outdoors, water, Great Lakes, piece of real estate that we're on. And, you know, not every place has that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, California, New England ha uh, are some places that benefit from being uh, similarly beautiful but also having the resources, private sector firms, uh, research universities that can be the engines of new economic activity. So you know, that's the push that I want to help people understand is we have special assets in this world economy and we need to leverage them both clean and protect and take advantage of our natural beauty, our outdoors, our water, our lakes for enjoyment and to mark us as a special place to live and work on the globe and fuel the engines of innovation and new discovery that can help us move from reliance on the auto industry, in our case in Michigan, to a whole new set of uh, job opportunities. Many of them have to do with clean tech uh, mm -hmm. solutions and sustainable work. And we can diversify. Exactly. All right. Thanks so much, Sean sure. Austin, for joining us. We appreciate it. You are watching live coverage of Great Lakes Week on Great Lakes Now.